This video tutorial is intended for informational purposes only. If you attempt to reproduce or perform anything that I have depicted in this video, you are doing so at your own risk. I am not responsible for any damages, either personal or to your property, that may result from performing any of these procedures and modifications. Hey everyone, Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel. Since I released my first tutorial on adding save batteries to Chinese bootleg Game Boy Advance games, I've been getting a lot of questions. It seems that a lot more people than I initially thought own a certain style of bootleg cartridge. This style of PCB, which was showcased in my initial bootleg video, has clearly defined battery contacts, to which a save battery can be soldered. Unlike this style, which doesn't at all. As I mentioned before, adding batteries to this style of cart isn't impossible, it's just a bit more challenging. Notice these two contacts next to each other right here. Yep, you probably could have guessed that this is where the battery needs to hook up to. Not so fast, though. There's a few other things we need to do as well in order to get a save battery installed on this PCB. To get familiar with what we're doing, please go check out my first GBA bootleg save battery tutorial. And while you're at it, take a look at some of my other Game Boy related tutorials which show everything from how to replace save batteries in real Game Boy games, to how to reprogram these bootleg cartridges with completely different games. I've included links in the description below to each of these videos, so check them out! For the tutorial today, here's a list of tools and supplies you'll need. A bootleg Game Boy Advance cartridge, a fine-tipped soldering iron, a bottle of 70% or higher isopropyl alcohol, a small handful of cotton swabs, some 6040 tin lead rosin core solder, some paste soldering flux, a roll of electrical tape, a tabbed CR1616 coin cell battery, a mini tri wing screwdriver, a pair of scissors, an X Acto knife or sharp pointed craft knife, a short strand of 24 to 30 gauge wire a pair of wire strippers, and a multimeter. In this tutorial, you can use either an analog or digital multimeter, since we only need to use the continuity check feature to verify electrical connections. To perform a continuity check on an analog meter, spin the dial to continuity mode and touch the two test leads together. You should see the needle move up across the gauge, meaning that there is a connection. On a digital meter, it's pretty much the same concept, although mine also gives out an audible alarm. As I've mentioned in previous videos, bootleg Game Boy Advance games can be picked up on eBay for just a few bucks each. You're also going to want to pick up some tabbed CR1616 coin cell batteries, which you can find by running a quick search on Amazon. Keep in mind that for the style of bootleg we're modding in this video, you can purchase a specially tabbed battery online that has both legs on the same side. These special cells aren't required, however, and for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to install a traditional tabbed cell. Without further ado, let's jump right into the tutorial part of this video. Disassemble your game cartridge by removing the screw in the back of the shell and sliding off the front half. Then, take out the PCB and lay it flat on your workspace. Our first order of business has to do with these three square contacts on the PCB. Use your multimeter to run a continuity check on these two contacts, the top and bottom right squares. There should be connectivity between them via a very tiny trace. Next. Take your X-Acto knife and very carefully cut into this section of the PCB between the top and bottom right square as shown by the line in the diagram. Remember to take care not to cut into any of the other traces in the area. You don't want to break any other circuit connections on the board besides the one between the top and bottom right squares. Now clean the cut area with a cotton swab and some rubbing alcohol to remove any debris created by cutting the trace.
Next, we'll test the continuity between these same two squares again. This time, there should be no connectivity between them at all. Here you also see me check this neighboring trace for connectivity, just to make sure I didn't cut more than I should have. After testing, use a cotton swab to apply soldering flux to the area of the bottom two squares. Once the flux is applied, use your soldering iron and some solder to bridge together the two bottom square contacts, effectively connecting them together. You want these squares to now look like the diagram on the left. With the solder in place, test the continuity between our new bridge and the top square. If you did everything correctly, there should not be any connectivity between them. Now use a cotton swab dipped in alcohol to clean the entire PCB, since at this point we're going to start covering up some things on the board. Cut yourself a square of electrical tape and place it over the entire region shown. You want to cover all contacts in this area, including our newly soldered bridge and the pins for the SRAM module in the upper right corner. With the tape now in place, take another cotton swab of flux and apply it to these two large circle contacts on the PCB, and then apply a little bit of solder to each of them. To prep your battery for soldering to the PCB, tin both the positive and negative tabs with solder. Now it's time to install the battery. Be sure that you connect the positive tab on the cell to the top circle of the two contacts on the PCB. Use your soldering iron to melt the solder on the positive tab and the PCB together. Since we're finished with the positive side of the battery, let's connect the negative side. Cut a 1.5 inch length of wire and then strip and tin both ends. Then solder one end of the wire to the negative tab on the battery and the other end to the bottom of the two contacts on the PCB. With the hard parts now completed, take a moment to clean up the PCB and trim any excess tape. All that's left to do now is reassemble the cart and reinsert the screw in the back of the shell. And just like that, our bootleg Game Boy Advance cart is now ready to be flashed with the new SRAM supporting game. For more information on flashing bootleg Game Boy Advance cartridges, Check out my Joey Jobags Gen 3 tutorial video, where I show you how to create your very own custom game carts. Please also consider checking out some of my other Game Boy related content. I've included links to these videos in the description below. I'd like to take a quick moment to thank David for sending in his bootleg cart for this tutorial. Without it, this video would likely not have been possible. If you liked this video, please click the like button below and consider subscribing to my channel to see more content like this in the future. When you do, click the bell button to receive alerts when I upload something new. Thanks again for watching everyone! As always, stay awesome, and I'll see you in my next video.